will the Red Sea become a battleground? Tensions soar as US and UK prepare to strike back against Houthi rebels. Welcome viewers. Today, we delve into the unfolding crisis as the United States and the United Kingdom stand on the brink of military action against Houthi military targets in Yemen. Tensions have soared following a recent Houthi attack on US and UK warships, prompting both nations to intensify preparations for potential strikes. In this video, we'll explore the background, diplomatic responses, and the implications of this rapidly evolving situation in the Southern Red Sea. Stay tuned as we break down the key events that have led to this critical juncture. In the wake of the Houthi assault on US and UK warships, both nations are mobilizing their military forces with a heightened sense of urgency. Military preparations have reached a critical juncture as Western defense sources shed light on the gravity of the situation. According to these sources, the intensified preparations are a direct response to the Houthi attack involving 21 missiles and drones aimed at US and UK warships on a fateful Tuesday night. While the scale and timing of the impending strikes remain shrouded in secrecy, the swift and determined response indicates a clear resolve to address the escalating threat posed by the Houthi rebels. The gravity of the situation is underscored by statements from key Western defense figures. A national security spokesperson, John Kirby, emphasized the need for a resolute response, stating, We're gonna do what we have to do to counter and defeat these threats that the Houthis keep throwing up on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. This sentiment resonates with the seriousness of the military preparations underway. As the clouds of uncertainty gather, these military maneuvers suggest a strategic response aimed at safeguarding vital interests in the region. The upcoming actions by the US and the UK are poised to reshape the geopolitical landscape in the Southern Red Sea and the international community watches with bated breath as military preparations unfold in response to the Houthi threat. As military preparations intensify, diplomatic responses from key figures further underscore the gravity of the situation. Notably, John Kirby, the US national security spokesperson, has provided insights into the US stance. When questioned about potential strikes against the Houthis in Yemen, Kirby asserted, I'm not going to telegraph our punches one way or another here. We're gonna do what we have to do to counter and defeat these threats that the Houthis keep throwing up on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. This calculated ambiguity suggests a strategic approach, withholding specific details to maintain a tactical advantage. Adding to the diplomatic chorus, Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, delivered a firm message. In response to the Houthi attack, he declared, there will be consequences. Blinken's statement underscores the seriousness with which the United States views the recent escalation, hinting at a commitment to holding those responsible accountable for their actions. Meanwhile, on the British front, Grant Shapps, the UK's defense secretary, has fueled speculation with his cryptic remark urging observers to watch this space. This enigmatic statement has raised expectations of UK involvement in the imminent military strikes. As Rishi Sunak's cabinet convenes virtually amid these developments, the anticipation of a significant UK role in the military action grows. The diplomatic responses from both the US and the UK set the stage for a complex interplay of geopolitical dynamics, where words spoken today may shape the actions taken tomorrow. As these diplomatic chess pieces move, the world anxiously awaits the unfolding narrative in the Southern Red Sea. As tensions escalate, the leader of the Houthi rebels, Abdul Malik al Houthi, has stepped into the spotlight with a televised address, delivering a defiant message in response to the looming threat of military strikes. Al Houthi declared, Any American attack will not remain without a response. The response will be greater than the attack that was carried out with 20 drones and a number of missiles. This bold statement leaves little room for ambiguity, emphasizing the Houthi rebels' determination to retaliate with force. Al Houthi's announcement takes a more ominous turn as he specifically targets ships linked to Israel, asserting, We are more determined to target ships linked to Israel, and we will not back down from that. This raises concerns about the potential expansion of the conflict in the Red Sea, as the Houthi leader hints at broader consequences should military strikes be executed. Analysts are now carefully assessing the implications of Al Houthi's words. The threat to target ships linked to Israel introduces a geopolitical dimension that extends beyond the immediate regional conflict. The possibility of an extended, multifaceted conflict in the Red Sea region looms large, adding a layer of complexity to an already volatile situation. As world leaders weigh the consequences of potential military actions, Al Houthi's resolute stance introduces an element of unpredictability. 
The fear of unintentionally stumbling into a protracted conflict is palpable and the international community watches closely, mindful of the delicate balance that must be maintained to avoid further escalation in the Red Sea. As the geopolitical chessboard unfolds, domestic political responses come into sharp focus. Rishi Sunak's cabinet, recognizing the gravity of the situation, convenes virtually to navigate the complex decisions surrounding potential military action. Anticipation mounts as observers await an expected statement in the Commons, a pivotal moment that could shape the UK's role in the unfolding crisis. However, the prospect of intervention is not without its challenges. Experts such as Siddharth Kaushal from the Royal United Services Institute think tank highlight the inherent risks associated with military engagement. Kaushal underscores, it depends on what targets are chosen, but the Houthis have said they are not backing down, so there is the risk of sleepwalking into a protracted conflict. This sobering analysis echoes concerns about unintended consequences and the potential for a prolonged and complex conflict in the Red Sea. The delicate balancing act faced by political leaders becomes evident as they navigate the intricate web of international relations, potential military repercussions, and the need to protect national interests. The looming decision carries not only the weight of immediate consequences but also the broader impact on regional stability and the global geopolitical landscape. The risk of intervention is further compounded by the potential for civilian casualties and the potential to inflame public opinion in an already volatile Middle East. As political leaders grapple with these challenges, the world watches closely, aware that the decisions made in the coming days will have far-reaching implications for the people of Yemen and beyond. As the specter of military action looms, humanitarian concerns take center stage. Aid agencies raise alarm about the potential impact of bombing on the already vulnerable Yemeni population. The backdrop of a country negotiating an end to a nine-year civil war adds complexity to the situation, with the possibility of further exacerbating the dire humanitarian crisis. Expressing their worries, aid agencies highlight the potential for increased suffering among Yemeni civilians. The fear of collateral damage, disruption of essential services, and exacerbation of an already challenging humanitarian situation is palpable. The international community closely watches how military decisions will navigate this delicate balance between strategic objectives and the well-being of innocent civilians. Interestingly, within Yemen, there is a notable dichotomy in public sentiment. Despite the humanitarian concerns raised by aid agencies, some segments of the Yemeni population interpret Houthi attacks as a form of resistance to Israel and the West. These attacks, seen through a lens of defiance, have garnered popular support within the country. This complexity underscores the intricate nature of the conflict, where geopolitical considerations intersect with local perceptions. The clash between humanitarian imperatives and political realities sets the stage for a nuanced discussion about the ethical dimensions of military action. Striking this balance is crucial, as decisions made in the coming days will not only shape the immediate fate of Yemen but also reverberate through the region, influencing the broader discourse on intervention, resistance, and the responsibility to protect vulnerable populations in times of conflict. As we delve into the unfolding crisis in Yemen, it's essential to place it within the broader context of the Middle East's complex geopolitical landscape. Simultaneous to the tensions in the southern Red Sea, Israel's months-long campaign against Hamas in Gaza adds another layer of regional instability. The conflict, now in its fourth month, amplifies the already precarious situation in the Middle East. Compounding these challenges, tensions in the north escalate as Israeli forces and the Iran-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon engage in increasingly aggressive tit-for-tat attacks. The volatile dynamics in both the southern and northern regions underscore the interconnectedness of conflicts, creating a challenging environment for diplomatic resolutions. Despite this delicate international situation, Western nations, spearheaded by the United States, increasingly believe that a military response to the Houthi threat is necessary. This belief is grounded in the need to protect vital interests in the Red Sea and respond decisively to the escalating series of Houthi missile and drone attacks. The delicate balance between diplomatic efforts and military actions unfolds against the backdrop of a region grappling with multiple conflicts, each with its own set of complexities and ramifications. As we continue to monitor developments, the international community faces the intricate task of navigating this multifaceted web of conflicts, where decisions made by one nation reverberate across the entire Middle East. The urgency of addressing the Houthi threat intertwines with broader regional dynamics, shaping the future of a region at the crossroads of geopolitical tensions. As the geopolitical puzzle unfolds, a critical piece revolves around the Houthi attacks on shipping, a strategic move that has sent shockwaves through the international community. 
The origins of these attacks trace back to weapons designed in Iran, underscoring the regional dynamics at play. The Houthi rebels, controlling the north and west of Yemen, initiated their campaign by targeting merchant shipping, disrupting a waterway that facilitates approximately 15% of world seaborne trade. The situation escalated dramatically on a fateful Tuesday night when the Houthi rebels aimed 21 missiles and drones at U.S. and U.K. warships in the Red Sea. This marked a significant escalation as it directly targeted vessels sent as protection to the region. Among the targeted ships was the Royal Navy's HMS Diamond, a destroyer that had to deploy defensive measures, including Sea Viper Slash Aster missiles and machine guns, to fend off the assault. This act of aggression propelled the international community into a state of heightened alert, prompting swift responses from both the United States and the United Kingdom. The Joint Naval Coalition, Operation Prosperity Guardian, comprising allied nations like Australia, Canada, Germany, and the UK, had been established to safeguard the Red Sea's vital waterway. The Tuesday night escalation tested the coalition's effectiveness and highlighted the urgent need for a robust response to curtail the mounting threat. As the world watches, the Houthi attacks on shipping underscore the fragility of global trade routes and the potential ripple effects of conflicts in strategically significant regions. The use of defensive measures by the targeted warships emphasizes the gravity of the situation, setting the stage for a nuanced exploration of the delicate balance between safeguarding international trade and mitigating the risk of military escalation. As we dissect the intricate dynamics of the conflict in the Red Sea, a pivotal player on the international stage emerges Operation Prosperity Guardian. This multinational naval coalition, spearheaded by the United States, has been strategically deployed to safeguard the vital waterway from escalating threats posed by Houthi rebels. Operation Prosperity Guardian involves a coalition of nations committed to ensuring the security of the Red Sea, a critical maritime passage for global trade. The coalition comprises countries such as Australia, Bahrain, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Singapore, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. The presence of these nations underscores the collective effort to address the mounting challenges in the region. At the heart of this coalition is the formidable U.S. aircraft carrier, the Dwight D. Eisenhower. The carrier, equipped with F-A-18 aircraft capable of precision strikes, leads the naval operations aimed at countering the Houthi threat. Alongside the carrier are three destroyers, working in tandem with other allied vessels, including the Royal Navy's HMS Diamond. This collaborative effort reflects the international community's resolve to project strength and deter further aggression. The strategic positioning of the naval coalition showcases a united front against the Houthi rebels, emphasizing the global significance of maintaining stability in the Red Sea. As diplomatic discussions unfold, the operations led by the Dwight D. Eisenhower and its allied vessels become a critical component in shaping the narrative of international response to the escalating tensions in this strategic maritime corridor. As the Red Sea crisis deepens, another layer of complexity emerges with Iran's involvement in the Gulf of Oman. In a separate but intertwining incident, Iran seized a U.S.-linked oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman, escalating tensions in an already volatile region. News agencies in Iran claim that the seizure was in response to a court order, emphasizing that it is unrelated to the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. This development, however, adds a new dimension to the growing concerns about the safety of commercial shipping in the region. The Gulf of Oman incident further underscores the intricate web of geopolitical rivalries at play in the Middle East. While Iranian authorities emphasize the legal context of the seizure, the timing inevitably intertwines with the heightened tensions surrounding Houthi attacks and the potential military response in the Red Sea. The international community is left grappling with the challenge of deciphering the nuanced motivations behind these actions. The seizure of the U.S.-linked oil tanker raises the stakes for commercial shipping, amplifying concerns about the safety of vessels navigating these critical waters. The Gulf of Oman, a key maritime passage connecting the Persian Gulf to the Arabian Sea, has become a focal point of escalating tensions. This incident adds another layer of uncertainty to an already complex situation, where diplomatic and military maneuvers are intricately linked to the security of vital global trade routes. As the Gulf of Oman incident unfolds, it becomes evident that the Red Sea crisis is not isolated but rather part of a broader regional narrative with multiple actors vying for influence. Navigating these treacherous waters requires a delicate balance between understanding the specific contexts of each incident and addressing the overarching challenges to maritime security in the Middle East. As the world grapples with escalating tensions in the Red Sea, the United Nations Security Council has entered the fray with a decisive move. 
In a resolution adopted, the Council called for an immediate end to Houthi attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. This collective stance reflects the international community's shared concern about the mounting threat to maritime security in one of the world's crucial waterways. A key provision of the resolution, sponsored by the United States and Japan, underscores the right of UN member states to defend their vessels. In accordance with international law, the resolution acknowledges the inherent right of nations to protect their ships from attacks that undermine navigational rights and freedoms. This provision injects a legal dimension into the response to Houthi aggression, emphasizing the commitment to upholding the principles of international law in the face of growing challenges. The UN Security Council's involvement brings a diplomatic layer to the complex situation, emphasizing the importance of a multilateral approach to address the crisis. The resolution signals a unified front against the Houthi attacks and lays the groundwork for potential international actions to enforce compliance. As the international community grapples with these developments, the UN Security Council resolution becomes a linchpin for diplomatic efforts to defuse tensions, uphold maritime security, and ensure adherence to the principles that govern the free and safe passage of vessels through vital waterways. The coming days will reveal how nations navigate this diplomatic landscape, balancing the imperative to protect against the pressing need to avoid further escalation in the Red Sea region. In conclusion, the unfolding crisis in the Red Sea has thrust the international community into a precarious situation marked by escalating tensions and a complex geopolitical landscape. From the initial Houthi attacks on shipping to the heightened military preparations by the United States and the United Kingdom, each development has added a layer of uncertainty to an already volatile region. As we navigate this intricate web of geopolitical dynamics, it becomes evident that the Red Sea crisis is not an isolated event but rather a convergence of broader conflicts in the Middle East. The ongoing campaigns in Gaza, the tensions in the north involving Israel and Hezbollah, and the seizure of a US-linked oil tanker by Iran in the Gulf of Oman collectively contribute to the intricate tapestry of challenges facing the international community. Speculation abounds regarding potential outcomes, ranging from calibrated military strikes to the risk of inadvertently stumbling into a protracted conflict. The Houthi leaders' resolute promise of retaliation and the UN Security Council's call for an immediate end to attacks on shipping further complicate the landscape, urging careful consideration of diplomatic, legal, and military avenues. In the face of rising risks, the need for prudence and thoughtful decision-making becomes paramount. Striking a delicate balance between safeguarding international interests, upholding maritime security, and minimizing harm to civilian populations requires careful navigation of a complex and multifaceted crisis. The coming days will undoubtedly shape the future of the Red Sea region and have far-reaching implications for global geopolitics. As we await further developments, the international community must remain vigilant and committed to finding peaceful and constructive resolutions to the challenges at hand.